when you feel about the benefits, you'll be looking at the benefits. But after a while, we'll get more, advance more to the importance of fearing God, the reason why we should. So let's continue with the benefits so far, because when you know the benefits of what you're doing, you will advance and move further into it. Come on, are we together? Praise the Lord. Let's look at Psalm 60 verse 4. Meanwhile, let me do a recap of the ones we've done before. We go to Psalm 60 verse 4. In Psalm 1 to 8, verse 1 to 4, we learned that he, you will eat the labor of your hands. A man, blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in his ways, for you shall eat the labor of your hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with you. Amen? Highlight it in Psalm 128, verse 1 to 4. Change, then we will go back to it. Psalm 1 to 8, 1 to 4. Your wife shall be as fruitful vine by the size of your house. Your children like olive plants round about your table. So blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. So when you fear the Lord, you are blessed. Come on, are you there? Blessed is everyone that does what? Fears the Lord. That walks in his ways. For you shall eat the labor of your hands. Number one, you're blessed. Number two, you will reap the labor of your hands. Would you like to work for the month and another person takes your salary? Hello, are you all there? You will want to stretch your hands and receive your salary, true? And for whatever you have labored, let's say you have labored to build a very wonderful, magnificent, nice house. Would you like to die before you enter the house? No. No. Everywhere, everywhere is quiet. You want to enter the house and enjoy what you have done, right? Hello. Are you all there? You know, some people will buy a car before they get to enter the car. An accident occurs between them and the car. And so between them and the house. So we marry a, a wife, and before the, as soon as the marriage is over, finished, something hits, either the wife dies or the man dies. That will never be your portion. Amen. That man is a cheated woman. Yeah. So blessed is the man, everyone that fears the Lord, that walks in his ways. For you shall eat the level. Let someone out there say, I will eat the level of my hand. I will eat the level. Say it again, I will enjoy the labor of my hands. Okay, the scriptures goes on to say, Happy shall thou be. You see, that's joy. Happy shall thou be. I it shall be well with you. That's wonderful. Who claims these promises this morning? Happy shall thou be. And it shall be well. No evil will come upon you. Come on, are you there with me? Happy shall and it shall be well with you. And he says concerning your family, your wife shall be as a fruitful vine by you, by the side of your house. That means barrenness is cancelled. Amen. Come on, are we together? Yes, so all our sisters should claim it if you are not yet married. And if you are married and you are expecting children, the Bible says you shall be fruitful. Amen. Assure yourself and say, I shall be fruitful. Shall be fruitful. Amen. Amen. And a fruitful vine by your house, your children. You see, the promises extends to you, to your wife, to your children. This is how God thinks. God thinks far. He does not limit his blessings to the man. Because of who you are, he extends the blessing from you to your wife, to your children. That means the, the blessing covers the whole family. If I were you, I would engage my life to fear the Lord. Come on, are we together? Hello. Praise the Lord. Your children shall be like olive plants round about your table. Behold, that is how the man shall be blessed that fears the Lord. Your children shall be like olive trees around. You know, there are some families you see, you admire them, right? Boys and girls, girls and boys, 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 or girls, 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 whichever one God gives you. And as they are growing, they look like kind, beautiful, handsome, tall, nice. Ah! 
in which God made me like this. Let me have this type of family. Come on, anybody like that here? Yeah, you admire it. You confess good things. The Bible says that's how your, your wife will be like this. See, look up, look up, look up. Give me your attention. When the scripture says this is how you will be, if you are if you're not there, then begin to pray, God. You say I will be like this. Come on, are you there? In your prayer. So that becomes your prayer topic. It informs your prayers. God, you said my family shall be like this. So when you look up, you desire it, you decree it, you declare it, and exactly it comes to pass. When God declares a thing for the man that fears his name, leave whatever will stop or hinder you from receiving that promise or allowing it to become a reality. Leave that aspect of life. Begin to incline to the other side so that you will receive the benefit that goes with that. When you fear the Lord, when you believe God, when you honor God, the Lord God said to, to, to Samuel concerning the house of Eli, they that honor me, I will do what? Honor them. So if you want to receive honor in your life, what do you do? You honor God. Then people will do what? Honor you. And God himself will do what? Oh, imagine when God honors you. Oh, man. That's wonderful. Are you with me? So it's very interesting. Somebody shout a better amen here. Okay. Now, let, let's go. We are recapping the ones we've studied before. We are just trying to look at them one after the other. You will enjoy long life. We talked about in the book of Proverbs 10 27. Long life is a guarantee. Under this, we studied why, I mean, in the other, uh, when we were in the, in the, in the, in the other location, we looked into the cause for sudden death in the lives of young people. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord prolongs your days. Is it there? Hello? The fear of the Lord does what? Everybody, I think you are, you are sleepy. What to you go? The fear of the Lord does what? Prolongs. Prolongs days, your days. Some of you are 30, some of you are 25. I don't think you like to check out at this age. Anybody there? Why are you looking at me like this? You don't want to check out and go to heaven? No. Tell yourself, I have a lot to do. Say, I have a lot to do. <laughs> say, say with me, heaven is not now. No matter how beautiful. Hello, say, no matter how beautiful, heaven is not now. Say, I have a lot to do. Come on, are you with me? So there's a lot God expects you to do. So don't be in a haste to go to heaven. No, don't be in a hurry. Do you know that whatever you're going to receive in heaven is as a result of what you've done here on earth? So you have to take your time and be careful what you do here. Because heaven is there waiting. It's the final destination of the saints. When you get there, you are only going to receive a reward. No more work, no more labor, nothing. No, no. So this is where you labor. Make every input. Kingdom you to can afford to make. I'm talking to somebody. Come on, are we all together? Somebody raise a glorious amen. amen. So you see that if you want to live long, fear the Lord. Now, how many of you know how where God has slashed the age from the days of Noah? Ask your neighbor, are you here? Ask your neighbor, are you here? Yes. Noah, before Noah, people lived 800, 500, 600, 700. Come on, are you there? Yes. But after the age, okay. God made a pronouncement, let me not say after, because we still discover that stuff, but God made a pronouncement that because of the evil lifestyle of men, he said their days shall be hundred and how many? Twenty. I don't know why some claim seventy years. 
Because David said, perhaps, if by reason of this or this, we get to 70. Actually, David started his life adventure at the very young age, and I think he died at about 70. But that's not where God pegged the years of men. Hello, are we all together? He pegged it at 120. So I said to them, I'm, as of now, I'm, I've not covered half. So when you're 59 or 60, you will start another journey again. When you're 40, you know you are still somewhere. 30, you are knocking at the door of starting life. <laughs> Some of you, come on, talk to me, somebody. Yes, sir. So you, but the idea here is you must lay a very strong foundation for that journey. Lay what? Very strong foundation. What? Godly, a godly foundation, which is the fear of the Lord. Joseph had that foundation for himself at a very young age. He feared God and avoided evil of every kind. Joseph had that foundation. If you have an ungodly foundation, you're in trouble. Because whatever you do at that early stage will play back later. Come on. Am I talking to someone? It will play back later. So that if you have a godly foundation, if you have a godly foundation, something different will begin to happen. It will also play back later in the future for you. It will play back later in the future for you. So it is advisable that you lay a godly foundation that has the fear of God included in it. Are you with me? I repeat what I've said. Your minds, how many of you are getting what I'm saying? If you lay a solid, godly foundation at this time, it will play back later. You will reap the benefits. That is, what will you read? Long life. Everybody say long life. Long life. Talk to me, say long life. Long life. <laughs> but if you have an ungodly, <laughs> ungodly lifestyle, what will happen to you? But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Bam, bam, bam. They drive big cars. Grr, grr, grr. They build house. Before 30, 40, 45, we will great to announce. That will never be your portion, somebody. Yeah. Come on, are you with me? Yes, I hope you have heard some news. We've seen them on our movies. We, 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 and he, his life is, he appears throws money anyhow, draws this and does that, and suddenly his life is portion. Somebody say, it will never be my portion. You can say, it will never be my portion, for I fear the Lord. Amen? Amen. The Bible says here, he that fears the Lord, his days shall be what? Prolonged. Look, there are two people I admire in scripture. Caleb and Simeon. Caleb said, the Lord has kept me alive as he promised. Since the day we went to survey the promised land, and I followed the Lord my God with all my heart, I followed him with all my heart, and he has kept me alive till today. You know, when he was speaking, he was already 85. Negotiating, that's when he, they got to the promised land. And that means life is starting at that 80. Oh, oh. Hello. It's not long life with sickness, so. no. He said, as strong as I was when I was 40. He said, that's the way I am at this 85. I'm still ready to box and hit the, the giants and destroy them. Give me this mountain. Come on. See, I don't just take any anyhow, anyhow place. I need this best place. I'm going to displace the, the giants and I'll take over that place. At 85, he was bouncing fine. Somebody say, that is my life. Another person is Simeon. That one, God came and told him, you will not die. You will not die till you have seen Christ. So that's when dying, the guy was living. His mates died, he continued. 
Because God specifically told him, you will not do what? <laughs> Sincerely, that man, if Jesus is not come, he will be here with us. <laughs> that is the truth. But you said, I live 969 years, right? Come on. Another person lived 960. But you said, I added 9 to 8. Sincerely, if Jesus, if the problem was that Christ will wait, you see that man here with us doing Bible studies. Because God said you will not do what? Uh, Till you have seen uh, Christ. Uh, so, what I'm saying is that when you fear the Lord, listen, there are some benefits. God treats you in a special way. We are discussing, right? Yes. Tell yourself, I will fear the Lord. And tell yourself, I will live long. Say to yourself, I will never die young. Amen. 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 I gave you a testimony to his glory. I say it over and over again. When a car wanted, a boss wanted to jam me when I was 20, 21, 20 to 21. But then I said I will live 80 years or 80 something. Okay. That was what was in my brain when I was much younger. When that car hit me, I said, okay, Satan, you have provoked me. I have stretched my year to 120 or 125. At five to eight. Abraham lived 175. After God pegged it at 120, Abraham lived 175. Who is here? See, when you serve the Lord, He will allow you to heaven. God is not in a hurry to bring us to heaven. He's not never. Are you there? Because there's a lot to do here on it. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Are you with me? Okay. So long life is added to the man that does what? Fears the Lord. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Okay. You will not be visited with evil, Proverbs 19.23. We are just recapping. But if it, if it turns to be our study, praise God. Proverbs 19.23. You will not be visited with evil. The fear of the Lord tends to life. And he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. I love this so much. Evil can visit others. But the scripture says that evil will not visit you. Amen. Nobody says amen. amen. Tell yourself, evil, evil. will never see me. Yes. Nor visit me. Again, say evil, evil. Will, never will never see me, nor visit me. Nor visit that means evil has led to travel. <laughs> the spirit of evil, that means evil is a spirit. Hello, are we all together? Yes, See, don't do anything that will attract evil when it's passing. What I learned when I do deliverance for all these, our, some of the girls, who are involved in this um, mermaid thing is that the mermaid always give them something to keep. It is either a dress or a ring or whatever, one thing or the other. Are we all together? Yes, so it, it, the scripture says here, yeah, a man that fears the Lord shall not be visited by evil. And we are looking at evil as a spirit, evil spirit. Evil is a spirit, the spirit of evil. Are you there? So. When the, and what we are saying is don't allow evil to have a reason to enter your house. If you keep any evil object in your, when in your home, when the evil spirits are moving around, they know the locations where they have contact. Sincerely, that's the truth about it. So when they are passing, ah, oh, this, that's our connection, we have a home there. God was going to destroy Sodom. And he passed through Abraham's house. When Abraham saw God and two angels coming, he rushed them. He said, these are divine beings. He rushed. And then brought them home. And God had a reason to interact with Abraham. And made him a promise. Abraham went and cooked for God. See, if you're a godly man, God will have a reason to visit you by the Holy Spirit. And an evil man, evil spirits will have a reason to visit the home because they have prepared their home for evil things. Who is here? Are we all discussing? So look at it at here. The fear of the Lord 
tends to life, leads to life. And he that has it shall abide secure or satisfied. He shall not be visited. Oh, I love this. He shall not be visited by evil. I decree evil will not visit any home here. Amen. Evil will not see your house. Amen. No evil shall befall you. Amen. You will be far from evil. Amen. That man should be more. Amen. Okay. Let's recap another. Tell yourself I will never be visited by evil. by evil. Evil will not visit me. Evil. And I will not visit evil. Will not visit evil. Amen. Amen. So do your best also not to visit, you know, some if evil refuses to visit you, some people will go, evil, where are you? I know you're there. So they will find a reason. And let me give you a secret here. The devil wants to attract you with what you love. I talked about it last week. If he knows you love anything, anything, he will dangle it before you to lure you to come in. But if you are if you are strong in spirit, do I have your attention this morning? Yes. Do I have your attention this morning? Yes. What I'm explaining is, as the Bible says, he that fears the Lord shall not be visited by evil. As God stops evil from visiting you, don't visit evil. Are you here with me? Because if you visit evil, then it means God will not be blamed. You are the one that went to look for evil. God has kept the evil far away from you, right? Avoid clubs. Avoid some areas where people fight, where people drink. Drinking parlors, clubs, and places that has evil presence and concentration. Avoid it. Avoid it. We say in our language that the sea will not drown whoever is near is not near to it. True or false? Hello, true or false? As we are here, will the ocean drown us? No. No matter how far it is, it will get out and go to somewhere. No. But when you are close, one roar of it and one wave of it will be carried away. Don't visit evil. Don't visit evil. When you know that. An area has an evil attention towards it. Avoid it. What do you do? Do I have your attention this morning? Yes. What, do you do, what do you do to evil? Avoid it. Avoid it. Let me make it clear to you. Avoid evil like a toilet. How many of you would like to eat in a very good toilet? Why are you looking at me like this? Especially in some of those other areas, eh? the open public toilet. Hey! They cook a very nice egusi soup. And you carry it to go and stay in the toilet. Avoid evil. You see, you, you are shouting, true or false? I'm giving you a true picture of how it should be. Avoid evil in that order. Never! Never. So that your name will not be associated with anything bad before the presence of God. Amen? Amen. If you can remember, when the devil was going around and came where angels were meeting, God asked him a question. Where are you coming from? He said, I've been roaming the whole earth. I hope you have not touched my servant Job. For there is not a man like... Oh, God was bragging about Job. A man that fears the Lord and does what? Avoids evil. Hello. Have you gotten that message? Tell yourself, I will avoid evil. I will avoid evil. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Amen? Amen? Okay, one more recap and we pray we, we enter the service. Oh, I love this one. Maybe you don't like it. Pray for me about it. Proverbs 22, 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord were riches, honor, and life. Add long there. By, the, by humility and the fear of the Lord are what? Riches and honor 
and wine. So when you fear the Lord, what will come into your life? Riches and honor and long life again. Bible repeats it over and over. Do we have any person that has um, any other translation apart from King James? Some of you don't know the Bible in the translation you have. Hello. Okay. Amen. Good. They turned it to, in this translation, they say, Obey the Lord. The idea there is when you fear the Lord, God will add riches to you. So when you're a young man that fears the Lord, pray. God, you said, When I fear you, you will bless me, you will make me rich. When we talk about richness, there is not about spiritual rich, no, financially rich. That's where we are going. God is very plain. When it means this, this is this. Spirituality should not be misplaced with economic blessing. The Bible says, when you fear the Lord, He said, I will bless you. I will make you rich. So when you stand and pray, and as you declare it, God will honor you because that is what He has said in the Bible scriptures. Come on, are you all there? Yeah. Amen. So these are the entitlements of those that fear the Lord. We are going to rise up and pray over all these things you have just led. A man that fears the Lord will have long life. He will have riches. He will have glory. His wife shall be this way. His children this way. Come on, are you all there? He shall not be visited by evil. Rise up as we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Are you blessed in the Bible studies? Hello. Are you blessed with these Bible studies? Can I hear you say, Oh Lord, I give you all the praise for being here this morning. I pray, grant my spirit to fear and honor you all the days of my life. Grant me the grace to fear and honor you all the days of my life. Make that a prayer. Make that a prayer this morning. Father, keep me away from whatever will cause evil to be near me. Lord, keep me away from whatever will cause evil to come into my life. Father, keep me away from evil. No evil shall visit me. No evil, Lord, shall touch my life. I shall be far from evil. I shall not be visited. No way. That is, no, Lord, I shall not be visited by any evil. Evil shall not see me. I will not see evil. Evil will not come near me, I will not come near evil. Evil shall be far from me, and I will be far from evil. Lord, I will live long. Nothing will cut short my life. Father, nothing will cut short my life. The enemy's sin will not cut short my life as I give my heart to fear you. Lord, I shall live long. Oh, come on, someone pray that prayer. As I give my life to fear the Lord, I shall, I shall not be visited by any evil. The Lord shall keep and preserve my going out and my coming in. Oh, it will become a reality, Lord. My going out and my coming in shall be preserved. I shall not be visited by evil. Hallelujah. I shall not be visited by evil. No evil will come near my house. The Lord shall prolong my days. My wife shall be blessed. My children shall be blessed. Make this declaration. Though you are not yet married, but declare it and it will come to pass in your days. You are married, you have kids, begin to declare, my children shall be blessed. Lord, everyone, my children shall be blessed. My children shall be a blessing, not a curse. Make it as a declaration, make it as a declaration. In Jesus' precious name we have all prayed. 
Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for, for, for the words, Lord, and the revelation and the light that has come to us, encouraging us, Lord, to fear that and honor your name. Father, I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will touch our hearts to fear you. Amen. To live under the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I decree that the enemy will not have his way over our lives. Amen. Father, we shall not be influenced to get inclined to evil in the name of Jesus. Amen. 